of Jesus, right, in the, in the shroud. And Louis Dumate, when he, um, sorry, uh, excuse me, his name is Louis Dumate, okay, he studied the shroud, and he wanted to depict and bring to life the man in the shroud, he wanted to bring to life Jesus. No, okay. So he has about 10 other sculptures, and he did, as you can see here, the, the, the Holy Door in the Basilica of St. Mary Major, okay, in Rome. So, you know, he's a sculptor that is known and all of that, and he kind of has dedicated himself to making these images, which are very beautiful, very inspiring. Okay, right now, I'll, I'll just give the final re reflections, and then you can take all the pictures that you want, if you want just the image. Okay, we're going to look at the face and expression of the man in the shroud, and this one, which is a direct image of the man in the shroud, okay? And we're just going to look at this expression that he has on his face. We're going to kind of put ourselves into his shoes and think about what he just went through, what he was suffering. And then all of a sudden, you know, this is not the face of a dead man, but someone who's coming to life and aware of everything that is happening. Is there something that we see in this expression that can call or catch our attention? It looks like he's at peace. It looks like he's at peace. He didn't have that worry. He's sad. No worry, folks. Like the young man that you were suffering. He doesn't look like that. He looks peaceful. Peaceful. Yeah. It's very impressive to think about that. That he's after death. And if we think about that, we know that when we suffer, many times our face looks a little bit different. Um, and when Jesus shows us this face, it's not to say, look at what I can do. Sorry about that. No. He shows us his face on the shroud. This face right after his suffering he shows it to us because he wants to draw us into this mystery with him. Because we can find peace in our suffering with Jesus. When we go away from Jesus, no peace. But when we come to Jesus, then we find that peace in, our, in all of our suffering. There's no suffering that he didn't take on and assimilate. And there's one more suffering that we haven't talked about yet. Because we've talked about all the physical suffering of Jesus, but we haven't talked about what was in his heart. Right? And there's one thing that he said on the cross that kind of reveals what was happening inside of him. He said, my God, my God, why have you been? Because Jesus, when he takes on our sin, he doesn't just take on the physical aspect, but especially the moral aspect of our sin. And so... If we think about our lives right now, I'm going to ask each of you in the silence of your heart, okay, you don't have to talk about any, to anyone about this, but think about the last suffering or a, a huge suffering that you've had in your life that hasn't been physical, where you felt betrayal or just, you know, the suffering without being able to shake it off. And when we go through that suffering, many times we would prefer something physical, right? To that suffering that we have in our hearts that we can't do anything with. And if we take that suffering that I experienced in that moment and all of the other sufferings in my life and kind of condense it in one moment, imagine what we would feel. It would be too much for us. And that's, and that's just my life, my little life. Jesus, when he, when he embraces his suffering, right, the cross, the passion, he takes on the suffering of all of us, which is consequence of sin in our lives, right, and of the whole world and all of history. So with our own little experience of suffering, we can kind of imagine a little bit the bitterness that he felt in his heart. Imagine. And we're not going to just stay there, right? We're not going to just stay there because we're going to be like, wow, Jesus, that is too much, too much for us to grasp. When Jesus goes to his passion, he is like the good shepherd 
who unlocks the valley of death, my valley of death, where I go when I have these moments of feeling death inside of me. You know? And he goes there because he doesn't just take on sin. All of his wounds of his body become light through the resurrection. And this is what he wants to do with us. When Jesus comes into our valley of death, he takes us out of that. And with him, he brings light into our life. You know? And Pope John Paul II says in his encyclical letter on the Eucharist, Ecclesia de Eucharistia, he says there that every time we receive the Eucharist, it's receiving a spark of the resurrection. God, who is our hope and our deepest suffering, mm -hmm. who comes and transforms death and suffering and abandonment and all of those things into light and his hope. You know? So we can have this confidence um, through your pilgrimage as you continue uh, in Jesus. You know? like he is here, his bride is here to be able to trust in him even more deeply than we ever have, you know, like to know that if he has taken out all this suffering, maybe my suffering is, is not too much for him, you know, it is a drop, and he wants to take it on, he is a good shepherd that comes with joy into my life, because he wants to take us on, he wants to bring us to his father, so I'll end here, I don't know if there's any priests in the group, sure. okay, Okay. He has a, a, a peaceful face. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, to, to kind of say a prayer, to sing together, or something to end. Okay, and I will leave you all alone so that you can do it as a group. And um, if you want to turn on the light to see the hologram images, you can just turn it off when you leave and just cover the image, okay, for the next week. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, it's kind of like That's how we know how much he loved us, that made him to undergo so much suffering, so much of pain for every one of us. We can think about anyone who would have undergone so much of pain. Only because he loves us, only because he carried, he carried all sins on his back, complete his guilt, pierced. We know that none of our sufferings come anywhere closer to the suffering that we would have. Though he was innocent, only because he loves each one of us. Let us also take a decision, Lord, to try our level best not to, not to make the Lord sad in any way, not to crucify him in any way, not to scourge him in any way. Because each time that we fall into sin, we scourge him. Carrying our sins, for washing everything with your blood. The wound that you receive, 
where all creation lived. And Suriko continued to create by being a born again. At this moment, we ask you, Lord, to help us to love it. Experiencing, experiencing your love, help us, Lord, to love you every moment of our life. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. For that great love. Saul was going to Damascus his journey to persecute Christians chapter 9 of uh, the Acts of the Apostles uh, Saul was uh, uh, struck down and uh, the question Jesus asked him, asked him was Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? and the answer for the question of Saul was who are you Lord? and then Jesus answered whom we are persecuting and that the scriptures it says when we commit sin we are persecuting Jesus when we do something wrong we continue to persecute Jesus cause harm to Jesus on the earth Lord is asking us to stop it and bring happiness into the lives of people and we may never again persecute him through our sins through our failures we make our prayers through Christ our Lord Amen. 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 Amen.